welcome to the Average Joe Cooking Show. Today we're gonna to be doing some stuffed manicotti. It sounds pretty uh, elaborate, looks elaborate, tastes phenomenal, super easy. Here's a little bit of prep work that is involved in it. I'm gonna run you through a quick uh, list of ingredients that you're gonna need for this. First off, if you have some homemade spaghetti sauce, you're gonna need at least two cups of it. Uh, you can use the jar or the can, whatever you want. Uh, just, you know, some nice red spaghetti sauce. You're going to need a 15 ounce tub of ricotta, ricotta cheese. You're gonna need some Parmesan, aged, uh, just, you know, nice and finely ground. A couple of eggs. And one small, uh, one and a half pound package of mild Italian sausage. Now you'll see that I've already browned this up. There's a reason why, because you want to let this come back down to a nice, cool consistency so it doesn't mess with your eggs and your ricotta cheese when you go to mix up the filling. So, that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by getting our water to boil for our manicotti shells. So let's go ahead and eat this back one. There we go, nice and high. Now, those of you who have never heard of manicotti, this is basically what manicotti is. It's a nice, thick, large noodle. And what we're going to do is we're going to boil this so it's nice and pliable, and we're going to fill it with cheese and meat. Very delicious. You cover it with marinara sauce, stick it in the oven, serve it, it's great. Okay, a um, couple other things you're gonna need for this recipe, you're going to need at least a half a pound of mozzarella because I like cheese things, so you can use a little or more if you want. Uh, some nice Italian flat leaf parsley and uh, of course some olive oil and a little bit of kosher salt and that reminds me that while our water is coming up to boil you just want about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt in your water and about one two teaspoons of olive oil. This helps to keep the noodles separate and it doesn't keep, and it keeps them from being sticky. So we're gonna let that come up to boil. And in the meantime, while that's coming up to boil, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start preparing our filling. So what we need to do here, nice little spatula, cheese. That simple. Now I'm gonna run you through this filling. The, what you're gonna wanna understand though is that a lot of this is eyeballing. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a few years so I kinda know how much I'm putting in at any particular time but if you want exact measurements, I'll try to do my best. So you're gonna need two medium eggs. One. Two. You're going to need about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Of course, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. There we go. So. And that's about a half a cup. There we go. Okay. And you're also going to need about a half, quarter to a half a cup of shredded mozzarella. Clean up my mess here real quick. There's something there. With you. Now, if you have a food processor, you, food processor. You can go ahead and grate this in the food processor if you have one by hand and you're doing what I'm doing. But you want this to be shredded. So, that actually looks to be just about right. We'll save that for later because there's also a little bit of mozzarella that gets put on top. go. Now, 
back to the package of Italian sausage. I didn't buy the links, I bought the just a regular, almost like a ground beef package of a mild Italian sausage. I did up the whole package because honestly, I can stick the leftovers in the freezer, add them to a sauce for like a weeknight meal when I'm just making spaghetti, or I can, you know, mix them into like a breakfast burrito in the morning. There's, there's plenty of things you can do with the leftovers. So I'm only gonna use about half of what I've got here, which, like I said, the, the package was about a pound and a half, so, you know, half of that, my math skills. Go figure. Okay, last but not least, let's move that out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing, is your Italian flat leaf parsley. I'm just gonna bunch it up. Call that good. You don't need a lot, just a little. Get that into a nice little bunch. And just rock your knife back and forth across it a few times. Scoop it back into a little pile. Ooh, you can smell it from here, actually. Okay. Now we're gonna add this to our mixture. And of course, we're gonna mix this up. Gently, you don't have to mash it all up together, but mix this up. You wanna make sure everything is nice and incorporated and evenly distributed, distributed throughout the, distributed, <laughs> um, throughout the mixture. Well, there we go. We're getting it nice and incorporated Look at how it looks. I mean, that looks just delicious as is. But of course, you want to make sure it's cooked first because of those raw eggs that are in there. Now, go, hearkening back to some previous episodes, you guys have seen me make uh, pastry bags out of Ziploc bags. And that's what we're going to do again today. And so, because there's no reason to go out and spend the money on pastry bags when you've already got them pretty much in your cupboard as is. So the only difference is we're gonna have to make the hole in the bag just a little bit bigger to make sure that uh, ground up sausage makes it through okay. You don't want it plugging it up when you're trying to fill these things. When these things are done, you're gonna go ahead and let them cool on the counter. Uh, a trick to keeping them from sticking is you wanna make sure that they're separated individually, of course, and you wanna lay them out on a nice piece of wax paper or tin foil if you have it and let them cool individually. You try not to let them to get stuck together, so about after about five minutes, you're gonna to wanna to turn them over so they're cooling down evenly, because that counter is nice and cool. It's gonna cool the pasta, but on the other side, that pasta is still a little bit warm, so you're gonna to wanna to flip them. I hope you understand that. So, let's close up this. Move these out of the way, and this is just now starting to come up to a boil. So, now that that's starting to come up to a boil, I'm gonna take my spaghetti sauce, and I'm gonna put it on about medium low. Because I just want it to get warm. I don't want it to start going crazy. And I turned on the wrong burner again. There we go. So, now that this is going gangbusters, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slide these in. They're gonna take about seven to eight minutes to boil. I like to uh, check them about after six though, because you don't want them too overdone. If they get overdone, then they just completely fall apart on you. You want them to be a little al dente, which means slightly underdone, or you know, the Italians say with a bite. Uh, that way they're a little bit easier to manage and work with. So, we're gonna come back in about six minutes and check on our manicotti. 
Okay, these have been going for about six minutes now, seven minutes. And they're just to the point where we're ready to let them cool. I like to check at least two or three of them just to make sure I'm getting a consistent amount. All right. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. Now, let that calm down just a little bit before I drain it. You got yourself your Ziploc bag. I've cut a nice big hole in the bottom of it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill our bag. You don't want to get it too full because you can always refill it. So about enough to do two or three. There we go. And there we go. That'll be your pastry bag for filling these things. So let's go ahead and we're going to get these out of the hot now. Oh, that one just split. That's one thing you got to be careful about is that these things will split rather easily. You see that? So. But the best part is you don't have to use every single one of these. You can just be gentle. Or you can camouflage them with sauce, too. I'm going to let these cool down until they're cool to the touch. About four or five minutes is really all you need. things when your uh, sauce starts to burp like that see that uh, just go ahead and turn it off it's warm enough because what we're gonna end up doing is after we've stuffed these noodles we're going to cover them with marinara or spaghetti sauce we're gonna stick them in a 350 oven for about 30 to 35 minutes and I'll go ahead and bake start there we go it's nice having a, a smart stove it lets you know when you're doing things wrong <laughs> there we go and we're done all right let's come on back in about five minutes we'll give these a chance to cool down we'll start filling up our manicotti thanks all right, now we've let these set for about five minutes and they're very, very manageable now. Before we start loading them into the pan, you're gonna go ahead and get a nice sized baking pan, put a little olive oil in there and you just wanna smear the bottom of it, help keep them from sticking while you're cooking them. There we go. All right. Around the sides, there we go. Now, now we start stuffing shells, or noodles. Sorry, shells is another thing. So very, very gently, let me clear up a little workstation here. You wanna, you'll see that they're at a bias. They're at angles. So you want to put it flat on the surface, just like that, holding it loosely but firmly. You know, loosely but firmly. It sounds like some sort of 80s song. Anyway, hold it, get the pastry dish, and just start filling it up. Okay. 
careful you don't want to split the sides. When it comes out the other end, you're done. Now repeat the process until they're all filled. Okay, we got room to do two more, so, and I've also got enough filling for two more. It's wonderful how these things work out because we have two that didn't make it. Shells, that is. Noodles. Keep calling them shells. There we go. See? This one split down the side. This one just got hammered in the pot. This one's got a little bit of a tear. Hmm. Big tear. I'm going to use the one with the split down the side. Sometimes you have to make these command decisions on the fly. Almost put that in my mouth. All right, come on, I know I got enough to fill this thing. Okay, and then when you're done, you taste take the casualties, bag them and tag them. All right, now we've got our manicotti all stuffed and looking pretty got our pasta sauce. Let me get a spoon. That looks good. I'm going to stir this up. Mmm, delicious. And you just want to run it over the top, just like so. You're not covering the entire noodle. Voila. Now, we're going to grate up a little bit of that leftover mozzarella. Now, if you have a food processor, I recommend grating mozzarella in a food processor because mozzarella is kind of a soft, spongy cheese, and it just is really really difficult to do by hand. It can be done, but that should be enough. Okay, so just over the top, nice and easy. Just enough. Because you got to remember, these things are chock full of cheese, so there's no reason to overload it. There we go. Nice. Perfect. All right. Got that out of the way. Now, we're going to cover this with 
some tin foil. We're gonna stick it in the oven for about half an hour, 350. And give me my tin foil. I'm gonna show you guys another quick trick that'll help you out. Dull side, shiny side. This tin foil has two different sides. Take the dull side up. Not too much, just about a little less than a teaspoon. And you're just going to kind of guesstimate the size of your pan and you're just going to rub that oil all over. You're asking, why is he doing this? Well, if you've ever made lasagna in the oven and covered it in tin foil and then you pulled that tin foil off and the entire layer of cheese on the top of that lasagna comes off, you know why. This will help the cheese to release and not get stuck to your aluminum foil. Nice and tight. You'll notice that, like I said, that manicotti is not drowning in sauce because there's enough liquid in there that those shells won't dry out. It'll keep it kind of steamed and they'll come out perfect. So come on back in 30 minutes and we'll look at this. Okay, kiddos, it's been about 30 minutes. We're gonna pull that out of the oven, take a look at it, and see our masterpiece. Another kitchen tip, don't stick your face directly over the oven door when immediately you open it because you're gonna get blasted. Oh. Sometimes I'm wondering why I still have eyebrows. Let's see what there is to see. Oh, look at that. God, I wish there was smell o vision I really do. That smells fantastic. Looks good. Simple, simple to do. It sounds daunting. There is a little bit of prep work, but it's all simple stuff. This is a good quality meal that you can serve your family any night of the week. The ingredients, believe it or not, are about under $20 for all this. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Weiniger's, again for providing us with the food which we cook with. Uh, if you're in the area, Weiniger's has got three markets, one in Roy, one in Clearfield, and one in Bountiful. We'd uh, encourage you to shop there because they've always got good deals, fresh ingredients. And uh, we'd also like to encourage you to visit our Facebook page, become a fan of the show, provide us with any comments, good or bad, indifferent, and we'll see you next time. Until then, happy eating. <laughs>